Hey everybody, what's going on? How are you tonight? Hey everybody. So, once again, we're back with Love in 60 Seconds. Hope that you have uh, been enjoying the series that we've been doing. And uh, today we're just going to talk about a, a fun topic, I guess, um, <laughs> how to fight fair in marriage and, and basically talk about, you know, how to resolve conflicts in marriages. Yep, absolutely. Um, if you've been married for any amount of time, I don't care if it's for two days. Actually, if you've just been in a relationship, you're going to have conflict. You're going to have arguments. And what we want to share with you um, is some tools to help you know how to not fight unfairly, I, not fighting dirty. I think when I posted, I put how to fight dirty, but that's not really what I meant. I went, I meant not to fight dirty. So how not to fight dirty? Uh, because a lot of times when you do fight dirty in marriage, um, particularly, um, and we're going to share with you some Christian values, but some of you that watch tonight may not be... Um, you know, Christians, you know, you may not be people of faith just yet, but, um, the principles are the same, you know, the matter of respect that you should have for your spouse, um, should never, ever leave. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things like the tone that you use, you know, you should never yell at your spouse because your spouse is not your child. Your spouse is your spouse and he sh or she is your equal. Um, you they're your partner. So you should not treat them. Uh, you shouldn't scold them. You know, a woman scolding her husband, you shouldn't be doing this and you're this, you know, that's just like so inappropriate on so many levels. So I want to kind of share with you, um, some tips to help you, um, not do that. If you're newly married, um, you know, not to get into that habit. And if you are married and been married for years and you have made that a habit, how to get out of that type of communication with your spouse. Right. So basically we're talking about how to have a healthy conflict in a relationship and marriages. And, and that, that's part of life. You're going to have healthy conflicts. You're going to be have all these things going on. It's just part of what goes on in life. But basically, what you don't want to do is have somebody who's controlling. That's you right. know, in, in marriage, you don't want to just have the controlling attitude, the dictator, because um, why it concerns or why it occurs in marriages and in relationships and when you're arguing is the reason why people don't have successful conflict resolution. That's right. So I guess the solution is, and the one thing we were just talking about that is, uh, you can't be the boss in marriage. You That's can't right. be bossy. You can't be like, hey, I'm I'm this. You know, talk to your spouse like you're the boss because you're equal. You're partners. That's right. It's like um, there's a scripture in the Bible that says it's better to be on the rooftop than in the house with a brawling or contentious woman. If you are going to be just like, oh, uh, you know, telling your husband, you know, you better do this. You need to get up off the couch. You need to go bring, you know, bring home some money. You not this and you're not that. You belittling this person. You berating this person. You telling them, you know, that, you know, you're being the boss, especially, you know, as a woman, you you bossing your, your man around. You know, that's what you, you know, you you breaking them down. Right. And the reason why is because if you take charge and want to be a boss in marriage, it will never foster a connection of love. And if you have a resolution, conflict resolution, where you don't have that, con uh, that aren't able to have that love and have that boss relationship, mm -hmm. hard truth, your, your marriage is in danger That's because true. you don't communicate well. Uh, your, your spouse will never receive what you have to say if you're being bossy, right? You... If you're being bossy, your spouse is not going to listen because in the back of their mind, they like, you're not my mama and you're not my daddy. And I don't care what you're saying. And really they're not listening to what you're saying. They're, they're thinking about what they're going to say next to win the fight. Right. And in marriage, whoever wins the fight, that's the person that lost right. because you did not make a connection. You did not bring healing. You did not bring, um, conflict resolution in a respectful way. Right. If you're, in a relationship with your marriage, you're both one. So they can't be a winner and a loser. That's not even biblically sound. You either both win or you both lose. Because Romans 14 and 19 says, as, Let us therefore follow after all things which for make peace, and things wherewithin we build each other, edify another. So even in conflict resolution, when you're 
dealing with the issue, you're still building your spouse That's because right. you are one and you have to learn how to be able to communicate, but also be able to speak to each other in love. <clears throat> and another part into having a healthy conflict, and, and this is sort of weird because you, if you look on the internet and talk about arguing, you'll hear people say, fight fair or play fair. And that's what Jean was talking about when she made that post. Is actually you don't play fair in marriage, and in, in, in marriage and in relationships when you're having a co a conflict, because that that doesn't even really make sense. Yeah. And what I mean for that is that you can't do good for good, bad for bad. That's right. That's what playing fair is. If, if you do good, I'm gonna give you good. If you do bad, I'm gonna give you bad, because that only works well for positive behavior. That's right. And uh, for negative behavior, if if your spouse, you know, does something, then they nut up. They do something really bad. They act a fool. They go out and, you know, your husband works a hard two weeks and he bring that money home and you get some shoes with all that money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or do something right. dumb or your husband does something dumb or he, uh, you know, it, it can be super serious. It can be something like, um, you know, whatever it is um, that that brought the conflict Especially if you're trying to be in a place of healing and reconciliation, if you're trying to, you cannot, um, you cannot do evil for evil. The Bible right. said you cannot render evil for evil. You really have to render good for evil. Right. right, because relationships thrive when we put aside what someone deserves and responds by giving them what they need. Ooh. That, that, that was good. Hey, that hey, hey. What is that? Basically, how that's grace. That's right, right? and that's, that's right. what God gives to us. That's right. So if if I'm supposed to love my wife like Christ loved the church, one thing I have to do in conflict resolution as as husband and wife, as both of us, is yeah. to give grace to each other, even in conflict. Yeah, so like if you want to strangle your spouse, because I know sometimes, you know, you get super angry and you just want to be like, oh, you know, are you serious? Like I've been doing, you know, and you having this moment and you're heated. If you're that heated and you feel like you can't talk to your spouse respectfully, you don't. Let me, let me just put this out here. Do not cross lines that you cannot come back from. Right. So, for example, don't call your 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 mate uh, stupid or out of their name. Or once you cross that line, it's not impossible, but it's really hard to come back from calling that person stupid or dummy or lazy or right. you trifling or I can't believe you're this or that. It's really hard to bring that level of respect back. I will say in 21 years of marriage that I have never called my husband out of his name and he's never called me out of my name. He hasn't mm -hmm. said you go you know, fish out food or whatever. You know, he hasn't said anything mm -hmm. like that in 21 years. That level of respect we have uh, made, made it a point to maintain that. And then also saying things that's demeaning like, oh, you shut up and you this kind of stuff. Do not cross that line. Right. Because if you cross that line, it's really hard to get back um, from that place, uh, that place and that level of respect. And just a quick thing, we are on both Facebook Live and on uh, where is this? Uh, 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 Instagram. Instagram Live. So we are going to get to your comments <clears throat> for both of both of those. So we're not ignoring them, ignoring them, but we want to get through some things, and then we're definitely going to talk about and respond to some of your comments that we have. Yep. When you're talking about don't play fair, another biblical reference this is just what Ephesians four and thirty two says, and you be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving to one another even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. And a lot of times, men, when you are arguing with your wife, when you are not in contention, um, not on the same page, you have a tendency, we have a tendency to be rough. We have a tendency to deal with our spouse how we would deal with the enemy sometimes or somebody in an argument that because we're trying to be the boss, we're trying to win. When the Bible says that you have to still be kind to one another and tenderhearted, that means having a heart towards them which is very, very important because you can't resolve any conflict if you don't have love and forgiveness. And then biblically, God says he can't really heal that part of the relationship unless you incorporate those things into the argument. Absolutely. And I know a couple of you have commented, uh, and I'm looking at a couple of comments about some of you are divorced uh, and some of you have, or, or in on the brink of divorce, some of you are separated. I'm looking at both Instagram and um, Facebook comments right now. And definitely we're praying for you because it's a healing process some of them you know have had some infidelity and had some really hard issues to get a, get past and for your next relationship and that's why we want you to invite people to this page and to this time that are single because 
people try to learn how to be married too late. You right. get married and just That's be like, right. oh, now I'm going to be married. Yeah. No, you need to learn these tools and to learn uh, this type of stuff before you get married because you, sometimes, especially people in church, you think you're going to get married and you're just going to walk off into the sunset. That's right. just, we just going to be married. We're just going to spend time. We're going to Netflix and chill every day. Not going to happen. You know, you got to really, marriage is hard work. You got to really work at it. Um, you got to work at really being a good forgiver. You got to forgive all kinds of stuff True. all the time. You just do. And and definitely, like I said, we're praying for you. Um, but it will help you to learn these tools of forgiveness and communication now so that when you go into your next relationship, that you're going in it with your eyes open and not with these rose colored glasses on. Right, right. And you're going to argue. You're going to have conflict in relationships and marriage. It is normal. It is healthy. If you don't have those conflicts, somebody is not communicating. Somebody has shut down mm -hmm. because disagreements are natural from time to time. But what makes or breaks a marriage is how you deal with the issues that are at hand. That's right. Arguments are going to be normal, but the way that you deal with it determines the success of the outcome. You got to talk about it as adult to adult. Mm -hmm. If I talk to my wife as a child, she's going to not receive anything I say. If she talks to me disrespectful, like talking from adult to child, I can't hear anything she says because we're not on the same level. The Bible says that it's to speak life or speak like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. That tongue, that tongue will get you in trouble. It's a you have got to watch how you communicate to each other. And when you even an argument, you have to say things both in love and kindness. That's right. And if you cannot, if you're too heated to uh, share your point of view without being disrespectful and without being just rude or mean, then you need to take a moment. But that doesn't mean like ladies, especially that does not mean give your spouse the silent treatment. Like, Oh, I'm just not going to talk to you. Yeah, you know, I'm mad. You know, I, you know, it, it, it doesn't mean give the silent treatment. It just means to say, Hey, right now I'm super overwhelmed and I really can't talk about it right now. I need you just to give me a minute. And I'm going to, we're going to come back and we're going to, we're going to talk. We're going to, like the Bible says, come, let us reason together. Let's talk about it. Come, right. let us, let, let us talk about what is bothering us because, um, I can't speak for my husband, but I do know men will definitely be very withdrawn. Yep. They won't mm -hmm. share. And I guess you can talk about more yeah. about how yeah. man feels okay. with regard to that, but. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, that, that leads into what we we're going to, I was going to talk about next is that you don't want to have what I call the vampire effect. And marriage and when you think about a vampire you think about um oh they suck blood they wear a cape they have the long fangs fangs but one thing that you don't really or that is a custom when they talk about the vampires that if a vampire walks in front of a mirror it doesn't see itself it has no reflection and a lot of times in conflicts we have the vampire effect in our marriage meaning that ask yourself do you have a reflection can you have conflict or can you accept what your spouse sees in you, right? You know, right. So they say, hey, you do this and you do this, and I'm saying this in love because when we have conflict, we can't resolve because of some of your habits. That's true. Uh, I mean, I, I absolutely agree. Um, you know, you definitely have to be able to see yourself. Uh, and then, you know, that's not a, a, a trigger for, you know, people that are listening saying, uh, <laughs> saying, see, I told you, I told you you was crazy. Or I told you, you don't be, you be talking crazy to me. I told you, no, it's not a, it's not a tool to point fingers at people. Because again, like I said, in our 21 years of marriage, we have experienced a lot of things and, um, you know, it's important to be able to see, you know what, I really need to come up in that. And my husband has shared things with me and said, hey, I really want you to, um, you know, and I'll, I'll share this. Uh, you know, sometimes I get real riled up if people like aren't doing what they're supposed to do in, in, in their place and, or if somebody's trying to mistreat me. And if he's there, a lot of times he'll want me to just kind of step back and let him take the lead on it. But I'm like, I'm coming for you. Like if you, I'm, we at a restaurant or whatever and you serving me and acting all off and what, I'm, oh, I'm coming for you. I'm like, listen here, you know, blah, 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 whatever I got to say. And my husband's like, hey, you know, let me take the lead on things sometimes when it's, it's a situation like that. Let me, let me take care of you. And I had to learn how to, no matter how bad I want to say something to somebody saying something crazy to me, I had to learn how to humble myself 
because my husband asked that of me. Right. And uh, I had to learn how to see myself, you know, and say, hey, OK, I can do better in that area by letting him take the lead um, on protecting yes. us and representing our family and, t and taking care of me in that respect. And that's what I call the vampire effect. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. Okay. Right. I mean, you get that, that's it. Right. <laughs> can you accept your bad traits? And then can you consider that what those traits is or how that plays in your marriage? Mm -hmm. So you, it's just basically looking at yourself and saying, before I can resolve conflict within the marriage, I need to resolve that conflict within ourselves. Uh, a scripture or within myself, a scripture that um, relates to this is uh, Romans 12 and 3. And it says, For I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according to as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So all of us have faults. All of us have issues. Mm -hmm. All of us have things we need to work on. But basically what we're saying is that, you know, in marriage, we can work through these faults and we can work through these things together. Right? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I, I think that um, that's a, a very good point, you know, and then again, uh, the key is working together. The key is really humbling yourself and dealing yes. with your, right. your spouse. And, and e even if you know you are a hundred percent right in uh, um, like somebody, like I said before, mentioned that they were uh, healing and trying to get through uh, a relationship because their spouse had cheated on them. Um, you know, even when you're going through that healing process, you cannot keep going back and be like angry and speaking to your spouse in that way because you're angry because of something they did two years yeah. ago. Yeah. If you're going to forgive as Christ has given us and commanded us to do, then you have to. And trust me, I know that, you know, when you're angry with somebody, it's a process. It's you can't just, you know, if my husband does something that makes me upset and He's got to step away. But my husband, if he does something that um, is, you know, a part of something that's making me super angry, um, then I know that he cannot, I cannot continue to say uh, or deal with it from an area of me being angry, me being angry with him. So I can't argue um, with him <laughs> being angry. We got to put the plug in the computer before we're going to die while we're talking. So, um... Anyways, we cannot do that. Um, you know, we can't argue from that perspective. Now, ne another thing that he has here, um, you know, not being hypocritical. You cannot um, try to, again, trying to win the argument, trying to say, um, I'm going to uh, do this and uh, I'm going to uh, fight like this with you. I'm going to uh, keep pointing these things out uh, to you without taking responsibility for your part. You got to always take responsibility. It takes two to tangle every time. And there's about five sides to every story. So, you know, you have got to definitely make sure that you are, um, you know, just making sure that you're humble enough and that you're not being a, hypocr a hypocrite because people don't even use that word anymore. They don't talk about heaven. They don't talk about hell. And they don't talk about being a hypocrite. So uh, they don't talk about uh, any of those <laughs> particular things a lot of times, but you cannot be a hypocrite and, and um, do one thing or say one thing and do another. You have got to humble yourself and you've got to, you know, we don't want to come across real preachy and all of that. And I know that it's hard, but it's doable. Because God's grace is sufficient. Definitely. Definitely sufficient. And we all make mistakes. So no matter what you've done in the past, even up to this day, like we talked about grace. Yeah. You know, grace covers a multitude of, multitude of sins. So even in your relationship, if you've done in resolving conflicts, all these things, there's still hope. There's still a grace enough for you to be able to get through. And one thing that you have to do in a relationship when you're fighting is to jump first. Now, when I was a kid, I used to uh, ride my bicycle back and forth to my uncle's house. And we, I'd get my buddies and we go through canyons and stuff and try to be daredevils, things that I'd be mortified if my kids did today. And one time, um, we had built this little ramp and was going to jump over, just a, not a, a big little ravine, but just enough to be stupid. <laughs> and basically, me and my boy was like, well, which one's going to go first? You know, and a lot of times... In a relationship, in an argument, somebody has to jump first. Somebody has to be the person to say, I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. I was wrong. I feel this way. I'm going to jump first. Because when resolving conflict, we always want the other person 
to admit their mistakes or they or they want the other person not even to make the mista- mistakes but take the first step right absolutely absolutely you definitely want the other person a lot of times to uh be the one who i guess breaks down first you know and says oh well you know honey you know i'm sorry or whatever that may not happen so you got to be the one to jump you got to be the one to say you know what i married you I wanted to be with you for whatever reason. I don't care if it was my mama said you was a good person or whatever it is. I agreed to this vow. I agreed to this union. So because of that, I'm going to bring myself all the way down here and I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to do my my level best to make this thing work with you. I'm going to do my level best to to make us come together. And you, you know, it could be a situation, you really hurt me. You tried to kill me. You um, you devastated me. What you said to me at my cousin's house, how you showed out and acted a fool in front of everybody. I'm so embarrassed. I can never see my family again. I'm just being hypothetical. Mm-hmm. But whatever the situation is, you have got to say, but I still want you. I still want us. And even if you don't even necessarily feel like you still want that person or you still want your us, you owe it to yourself. And you owe it to your spouse to give it an opportunity to try. And because happiness is there for you. And it's not in switching partners. It's not in going to get you somebody else. It's not in that because you still gonna have to work with you with that other person. And that goes back to looking at the man in the mirror and jumping first. You have to take responsibility for even your own actions. So even if your marriage needs help, you know, don't work on trying to change your spouse. Don't I I if our marriage is in trouble, I can't work on trying to change her. I have to work on trying to change me. Absolutely. Because a lot of times, that's the, the issue. And then God's grace gives you that, that coverage so that your spouse will understand, hey, you know, we got some situations that we need to work on. But when you have that jump first attitude, when you're resolving conflicts, when you're in an argument, that is the road to solving conflicts that are are is a better way of making your marriage more successful and it's going to move your marriage into a positive direction absolutely and i was about to say you know that type of thing and that type of connection is again how you get to the place of happiness how you get to the place of joy how you get to the place of intimacy how you get to the place of like when you're making love when you are at that moment you're in the vein you like we right here that's how you get there. You don't get there by sexy lingerie and uh, playing some good. I don't know who who's a good person. Some PJ Morton or some who who's. I don't know. I don't some know. Chris Brown. Some, some Chris Brown or somebody. You know. You, you don't get that place in in your love. You you don't get to that place in your love from just all of that external stuff, lighting candles and all that, because. That's not really what your love is all about. It's about your connection. It's about your spiritual connection. It's about your connection with God. When you have that and you have that spirit of humility and that spirit of, of, of humble, uh, apologetic spirit, that is what is going to change your life. That is what makes your, your intimacy great. That's what makes your love making great. That's what makes your uh, connection great. That's what makes her... Man, that's what make, opens up her heart because her body might be open, but our heart still might not be. Right. So, and you know, and that's another point that we definitely are talking about when we talk about intimacy. You know, men are, are very visual. You know, we see a lot. You know, we like that stimulates us how we look at things. Where a woman, if a, for a man to be a great lover, if you understand how your woman operates, the wife says she's a teapot, and the teapot mm-hmm. you just can't go and pour out a cup of coffee. You got to turn the fire on. You got to warm it up. And then when that teapot gets hot, it starts giving out. And you know, that's a whole nother issue. That, right, that's a whole nother lesson. thing that, that we but can yes. be real about. <laughs> but leading into that, our, our, our thing when we talk about comfort resolution is to know and understand your spouse. Because married couples mostly experience conflicts when they treat the events of their spouse lives, things that happen in their past, and they know them and know the facts about them, but they don't truly understand the moments that happen. And if I can just be um, open a little bit, there's times in our marriage that I know my wife struggles with certain events um, in her life that has happened to her. 
Now, because I know her and I know these things, I know there's certain dates that she might just have a, a bad day. You know, knowing and understanding your spouse is a sign of compassion to be like to say, not only do I know what you're going through, but um, I'm compassionate enough to understand and I'm compassionate enough to help you. Because Romans 12 and 15 says, rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. Husbands, you got to understand your wife. you got to understand that even though you know her, you know how many brothers and sisters she has, how what she did when she was six years old, who's the first person she kissed. If you don't understand that maybe sometimes she's having a bad day because of something that happened in the past, it's, it's happening to know, and that's where your compassion comes in. Mm-hmm. And that's where how you can be a better person and a better husband and a better spouse, even in conflict resolution. Absolutely. And then not use past, even if it was a, a past happening or a past mistake. Don't use past mistakes as tools to win an argument. Don't use that. Don't be like, oh, I remember when you, you know, you quit your job and I had to support your tail for 10 months. Don't don't use past mistakes or past failures to try to win an argument because that is unfair. That that I mean, you know, well, I guess that's being fair, but that's that's being cruel and that's not being loving and that's not being kind. No matter resist that urge to win the fight by saying, well, I did this because yo and this still don't. Uh, amount to what you did you can't do that because right. it's just it's not what god would do because if god did that to us then where would we be we would be in a um <laughs> we'd be in a world of trouble hi right there daryl cannon there? Okay. <laughs> so you need to learn that. something it's <laughs> definitely for you brother yeah but the last thing that we want to talk in conflict resolution and fighting fair we talked about actually playing fair is not a good thing to do because if you played fairly or you fought fairly you're, you're giving good for good, and bad for bad. for bad. So you can't play fair. You can't fight fair. you got to fight love. you got to fight lovingly. You have to admit to yourself, understand your habits. We talked about the vampire effect. We talked about looking at the man in the mirror. You have to understand your other half. You can't, um, or, or basically, um, don't quit halfway through recovery. Um, an example of that is like just the other, or I've been dealing with the injury in my arm. I had a bicep injury. And an example of don't quit halfway through is that I took a few weeks off from working out and did all the things. And I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm good. And went back at the gym and hit it hard. Well, I injured myself again because I wasn't through the recovery process. And a lot of times in marriage, there may be some underlying problems to why you're having arguments. um, But you cannot start resolving those problems um, that might be in your relationship when you don't have, when you don't get through the recovery. Like, and, and, a, and a, another example is that, and I hope I'm not talking too long is, oh, but okay. example is like men will say, Hey, I'm shutting down because my wife spends too much money on shoes. So I'm not going to communicate. And then the wife will say, well, I'm spending too much money on shoes because my man is shutting down. You know, so you may know what the conflict problem is and know what the problem is, but if you don't ever get all the way through mm-hmm. your your the, re- the recovery process, Sorry. you're never going to be able to have a successful outcome to your conflict resolution. Absolutely, and, and you know, just a last word on on even on that. You know, you definitely have to make sure that and that's and that goes actually back to so whoever somebody leaping first because she might you know somebody's got to share why they're feeling the way that they're feeling. And then somebody's got to basically stop the bleeding. Somebody's got to stop it somewhere um, and, and say something and, and, and have an open conversation, an open dialogue. And I know, you know, a lot of it is not all about shoes. Most of the time it's about, you know, a guy um, looking at somebody else, maybe at work or a woman looking at somebody else that's, you know, at church or somewhere, you know, so, you know, somebody looking for because they're looking for that love. They're looking for that validation and looking for oh. Uh, that one that makes them feel important and no, it doesn't matter. Uh, makes them feel important. I got it, baby. Yeah. Um, and you know, that person usually, that person should be your spouse. Nobody should make you feel any better in the world than your spouse. Um, and 
if you're looking for that validation somewhere else, you're looking in the wrong place and you're, you're in error. The bishop preached on that tonight. We go to Bernie Bush Church and bishop preached. Uh, well, he talked about fasting, but he talked about how fasting um, kills your flesh and your desire to uh, do something that's out of order. Um, and of course, that's a whole nother lesson, a great lesson. You should look it up. But um, at any rate, you cannot be looking for validation and love and support and joy outside of your marriage because that's all God's already giving you that all within your spouse. Mm -hmm. And again, going back to recap a lot of the things, do not talk to your spouse like their child. Do not yell at your spouse. Your spouse is not your kid. And do not um, call your spouse out of their name. Right. Uh, you know, fight respectfully. Right. You can, for example, saying, you know, instead of me going, oh, you know what, you you stupid. Why you ain't answer the phone? You big head. You know, I've been calling you all day. You, I'm out here in the street and I got a flat tire. You know, you may feel like that, you know, but you have to say, you know, honey, I'm, I'm, I'm I've been out here struggling right. and I'm, I need your help. And I'm really frustrated right now. I'm really, really upset right now. And I can't even begin to tell you in words how hurt and angry I am that you didn't answer me. Right. You know, were you playing video games or what were you doing? I'm just being silly, but what were you doing that you didn't come and see about me? Right. And right. and that type of tone will get you way far. What's the old adage? You know, you can draw more you know, more bees with honey than you can with vinegar. So be more sweet so that person, and then you, sometimes, you know, you might be married to a jerk, but you still do what God says do, and you still do it in the manner which God says. And watch God begin to turn things around if you're consistent with what he says do. That's true. And, you know, one thing we have experienced is all of us have made mistakes, you know, and some mistakes and in some instances might have broken up marriages, might have, you might have been in instances where things have just happened were so detrimental or where you feel like you're the only one that's trying to heal or you're the only one that's trying to put it together, that you're the only one that's trying, you know, and, and a lot of times, you know, people can't come back from infidelity. They can't come back from trust issues. They can't come back from from those things. And, and let's say even if you have gone on from a relationship that has had that, once again, that healing process that I was talking about, because uh, many people will work through the conflict that they have till the pain is gone. But once the pain is gone, they, they just leave it alone. But the deeper issue is still there. Yes. So even if you've had conflict, even if you've been divorced, even if you were going through, even if you were right, you know, a lot of times you have to be able to look at if you go into the next relationship, the next marriage, that you have resolved those issues. Um, and fighting respectfully, like we say, is to fight lovingly, but is to fight unfairly, meaning don't play fair. Playing fair, I, I, man, I got to tell you, it is reiterating. You cannot give good for good. You cannot give love for love. You have to give grace for everything. Because if you give grace for her mistake or your spouse's mistake, they will give grace for your mistakes. And if they don't give grace for your mistake, God will give you grace your mistakes and that is what is important because as much as I love my spouse and I plan to see her for eternity and beyond yeah, I'd rather stand before God and have him say well done that good and faithful servant than to be the best husband the most loving husband in the world and go to hell you know so <clears throat> there's a lot of things and a lot of issues that if you're really taking this relationship seriously you know and, and that's one of the things we want to talk about I was an only child growing up so I didn't have a mom and dad in the home so let me tell you let's just be real for a few more minutes conflict resolution was hard for me because I never saw two people fight so if my spouse didn't understand about that about me she would understand in the beginning of our marriages I wouldn't fight with her I would just with, with, withdraw I right. wouldn't say anything like, I'm gonna kill him yeah. and, and, <laughs> and that was stressful on us because one but if she didn't know that my background, that I wasn't used to, not that I didn't love her, but that I didn't know how to resolve conflict. And that's important. And I had to learn it. You know, when we first got married, I thought, like we said earlier, it's just going to be all great. You know, you're never going to have a debt. And that's not that's not realistic. Not at all. And I had to really be patient with him uh, learning how to 
um, communicate with me because I grew up with the family of five. You know, it was five, it was five siblings. So we, you know, we was always going back and forth. And most of us was girls. So girls, we talk about our feelings. Yeah. Our feelings. She made me sick. She made me. And you crying and you having all this, you got all this extra emotion, all these feelings. And my poor one brother, he didn't have, he was not filling us with our feelings. But anyways, um, you know, I was not used to somebody who did not, I'm like, oh my gosh, talk to me. At least tell me what it is that's, you know, what's going on. He was not doing that. And I had to be patient um, and allow God to bring him to a place where, you know, we would talk through things and share. And, you know, now he's so gracious and humble and uh, wonderful, you know, when we do have to discuss things or we do have a, a disagreement, um, he is so uh, humble and patient with me because sometimes I'm still like, Bleh! and he is like, honey, okay. Or he'll just, you know, not say anything too much and just be like, oh, you know, you know, he's very patient with, with me now, you know, and I, I appreciate God for that, um, for giving him that. So, so, hey, we just wanted to tell yeah. you guys that, uh, you know, it's okay to have a relationship, and when you have a relationship, you have arguments and you fight. Yeah, you do. That, that, that's natural. Yeah. But what makes a successful marriage, a successful relationship, is how you resolve it, how you go through it, that you make it to the end, that you don't talk bad to your spouse, Absolutely. that you don't disrespect them, yeah. that you don't what, that you jump first, and that yeah. you look at the man in the mirror. That's you right. know, this woman is is a, is a a wonderful woman and guess what tomorrow is her birthday Aww. i want to wish her a great big happy 27th birthday <laughs> plus a couple of minus few couple, maybe yes, in, in there so but you know please join us uh those of you a few of you asked to, for us to pray for you definitely want to do that but we, we also we also want to hear some of the topics that you want to talk about you know type us we appreciate you uh joining in on facebook and on instagram live Tell all your friends. We're out there on social media. We're Thank out there you, on, on, on Instagram. Bye. Go to our YouTube page. Follow us there. We just covered New York Fashion Week. We have some great stuff coming on. we got a talk show coming up that's going to be awesome. That's Fire. Going to, that's going to be awesome. It's going to be my wife and a few other women. They're going to talk about all kinds of issues. So we got a lot of stuff coming on. So we appreciate each and every Thank one you. of you. We want to send a, a shout out to Prophet Trumbo. Yes. He is also, look at him on Facebook. He also has a web series that he has been uh, promoting. Follow him. He has some good sound doctrine that you guys want to so hear. Good. We appreciate you guys. And yes. we thank everybody for tuning in. We love you. We yes. love you guys. Yes. Praying for you. Absolutely. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Thank you. This has been your extended version of Love in 60 Seconds. We wish you love. What, what peace and soul? No, no, that's, right, right, whatever. Right. All but of that. <laughs> also, also, one last thing. We're, we're probably going to change our time next week to Mondays. Um, so please tell everybody. Um, good to topic, come on. Yeah. Good topic. Definitely. We'll talk about that. Couples should have social medias as a joint account. Hey, or access. We access. talked about that before. Ooh, we yes. we can talk I, about that. Because I can go on all his stuff, honey. Trust. <laughs> <laughs> right. Definitely. Definitely. No secrets. Definitely no, no secrets. secrets. So we definitely Phones, want you guys. everything. <laughs> everything. Definitely, guys. want you to tune in. Tune in to our friends, you know, that are also doing things. And uh, we'll see you next week on Monday. Please tell your friend. We appreciate you guys. We're growing from two growers to five to ten. One day we want to have 100, 200, 1,000. Yeah. But, hey, we believe that whoever's on here today, this word was for you. Take it and enjoy it. And we'll see you next Monday. Monday. We're going Bless to Mondays. You Love you guys. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.